It looks complicated, but it's not really that difficult to do. It's actually a pretty simple trick that I use all of the time for my animations whenever I need something animated very quickly and very randomly. So this is basically a trick that I've gotten from, I think, Gleb Alexandrov's tutorial for his camera shake, and I found it very useful for a variety of applications. So today we'll be animating an object and I'll show you how to apply these noise modifiers to a keyframe and have yourself a very randomized animation. Let's get into it. Now this is the project that I'm working on. Basically it's just a megaphone. I have three area lights around it. I have a camera and just this simple construction. If I go into my EV rendered view, it looks like this. This file will be available for free on my Gumroad, uh, link in the description, you can go check it out and you can uh, take a closer look at some of these things. So I'm gonna open up my project and this is basically the project that I'm working on. It's just a megaphone. This is how it looks like in rendered view in EV. I have just three area lights and an HDRI set like that. Very simple materials, very simple construction. Now the way that I would usually go about it is just keyframe separately, rotation, location, but that's not very efficient for, for something that needs to be randomized and animated relatively quickly. I'll be working with 30 frames per second. If you wanna change that, you go into your output properties, frame rate, and then change it to 30 FPS. Another thing is changing the end. Now oh, it's a bit easier to calculate. So let's say I want to have five seconds. You can just click on it, hold control, and you can then go in increments of 10. I can now start thinking about my animation. When you rotate, your rotation is going to be dependent on the point of origin. So now if I rotate, it's going to pivot right about there. If I go shift control alt c origin to geometry and I rotate it now you can see it's rotating from a completely different pivot point. So I'm telling you this because if you have an object that's specific let's say a baseball bat or maybe you have I don't know a golf club or maybe you have I don't know a cloud or whatever make sure you know where that point is where you want it and position it there. One way of repositioning that is not just clicking around but let's say I want to position it right here. So I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to select these vertices and press shift S cursor to select it. And that's going to put the cursor right there. So in between all of those four vertices that I've selected. Now I go shift control alt C origin to 3D cursor and that's going to reposition the cursor and the megaphone is going to move completely differently. I'm gonna keep it there because I like it there. After you've set your origin point, we can start with the animation part. I want to divide the screen up here like so, and I wanna go into graph editor. With your mouse on the left screen, press I and select location and rotation. So this is gonna put in these keyframes. So you can click on the drop down menu, X location, Y location and Euler rotation. Now how do we make that noise stuff? Well press N, go under modifiers, add a modifier and you can choose noise. Let me extend this just slightly so we have a better view of that. And now if I play my animation you can see it's moving it like that. But it doesn't look really good. It's very fidgety, it's very it's too strong for what we want. I can influence that by either increasing the strength or decreasing the strength. The problem with just decreasing the strength is you have this very small and jittering uh, animation. We don't want that really. Scale is a very useful one because now you can see that we have sort of a curving movement. We can bring down our strength like so and the movement is much smoother right now. Another thing worth noting is you have these options right here, replace, add, subtract, multiply. And this basically means that if you press add, this is going to move above zero, like that. So every change in strength you are doing is just going to move to the right, because this is our origin point right here. This is our world origin. So it's going to move from zero to one or if you press subtract, it's going to go like that. I'm going to keep it at replace like that. And I'm just going to drop down the strength. We don't want to go 
under every single one and add modifier and noise and whatever, we're just going to copy this modifier on, by clicking on this icon, go into Y location and press the paste icon. And you can see that it pasted the exact same wave. The problem is it's going to be relatively similar. So one thing you can do is just fidget around with the offset so you can find a different starting point for your wave. Basically, we do the same thing everywhere. We're going to just move these randomly. Maybe you can increase the strength somewhere, maybe decrease it. Maybe you can increase the scale so it's even smoother. In that case, you can just go back and then recorrect those movements like that. You're always going to have something very random by using this approach. And let's go to rotation. So this is pretty strong. We can go even stronger or lesser. I think something like that is completely fine. So we have this upwards motion on the X. Let's paste that. Let's move the offsets so the movement is randomized. And let's go to the Euler again. And we have this one like that. So this is how I usually use this for my animations when I need something randomly animated. Another thing that can be done with this is you can also go under your modifiers and let's say, let's use a simple deform, something like this on our megaphone. So let's get a bit crazy with it. Let's go under graph editor again, like that. So we have these open. Now, one thing, like I said previously, is you can actually animate any keyframe using this method. Let's choose something, let's choose something weird. I don't know. I'm just going to experiment. I'm just going to find something that really functions really weirdly. I, I think I like this bend on the Z with 68 degrees, something like that. Oops. I can just go down, back to zero, insert keyframe, and now this little guy over here appeared. So if I go on N, modifiers, I can again add a noise modifier. If I press play, it's just jittering around. So again, if you want a jittering motion like that, you can just increase the strength, keep the scale re relatively small. Offset is not extremely important in this case. But if you want a smoother movement, you can just go increase the scale a lot and then increase the strength. The problem is we don't want it to stretch in. So what do we do if we want it to stretch out? Replace and add. So this means it's just going to stretch above zero. And you can see the movement here in our right panel right there. So let's increase the strength. Let's in decrease the scale so it's a bit more dynamic like that. Let's see how it looks from the camera. Maybe that's just a bit too much. So let's do it like that. And it gets this really interesting gummy wobbly type of vibe to it. I don't know. I really like this approach when it comes to just animating weird stuff and animating it randomly. And you saw you can basically animate any type of keyframe you have with this option. So this is going to be the end of this tutorial, but I don't want to end it right here. What I want you to do is think about what you saw in the tutorial. Think about any object that you might like. I don't know, maybe it could be an envelope. Maybe it could be a bat. Maybe it could be, I don't know, an apple or whatever. And try thinking about a motion or maybe a modifier or something that you think would be interesting to explore and try using this trick in conjunction with the two. And I'm really interested in what your results will look like. So I challenge you to try those. I challenge you to make a post with that. And if you make the post, be sure to add me on Instagram at Blatade, and I'll be sure to share it in a story. So this is going to be it for this video. Make sure you like, subscribe the video. There's going to be a bunch of free resources coming your way. So make sure to be subscribed, hit the notification bell so you know when I post stuff and you can get something free in return. In any case, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.